welcome to another edition of the Empower Hour. I am Al Kumar, and Hanifa is going to be joining us in just one quick second via split screen. Um, this is the Empower Hour. We do this each and every Wednesday from 2 to 3 p.m. Um, we come to you with impactful topics of discussion that affect our everyday lives. Um, where's my sister Hanifa? There she is. <laughs> hey, Hanifa, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? You good, good, good. You at home, ready to burst? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so my sister is like in her final stages of pregnancy. So you know, she wants to be as comfortably as humanly possible in the process. All you ladies, you know what what she one, means out there. One week. One one week to go. One week. Wow, can't wait, can't wait to meet him. Um, Hanifa, shift over a little bit. You're a little bit cut off. Shift to your left a little. Yeah? Perfect. A little bit more. Okay. Cool, family, if you guys are joining us in Facebook land or in YouTube land, thank you so much for tuning in. If you want to see Hanifa and I both on the screen together and you a clear picture, you hear us, very well you want to log off and jump on to facebook under elife media group that's where we live stream um under the main um um studio page so go under elife media group on facebook and you can uh, see the whole program with us together right there yes. all right today's topic is hot topics in and out the news so, yep. yeah, so we figured we'd just dig in and talk about some of the things that's been mulling around in the um, in the hearts and minds of us here uh, lately. So if you guys want to join this discussion, definitely just chime out, put your um, comments out. I'm here. I can see all your comments on both streams. And so we'll get you into the discussion. So what's on your mind? What is the hottest topic going on? Um, for you here lately that you want to discuss and, and uh, talk about more. Hanifa, you want to do this how we normally do, ping pong? We can go back and forth? Yeah, I can again. My, I have mine um, sort of sectioned off today. Okay. Um, I have politics, entertainment. Okay, and I'm sure as we normally do, we'll probably have the, some of the same topics. Some of the same stuff. So mm -hmm. it's, it's yeah, we okay. can we can alternate. Okay, you want to go first? Uh, not really. I'm sure you have Kamala Harris on your your of list. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have her and Cory Booker Booker kind of linked together on my yes. list. <laughs> okay, so let's yeah, talk we, about that. We can, talk, <laughs> we can talk about it. I'm so I'm, I I feel kind of out of the loop because I can't see the comments. But um, yeah, we can start with Miss Miss Harris. Okay. So and Mr. Booker. Um, so. Okay. You know, there's like, there's a lot of controversy around her, mm -hmm. um, particularly in the in the black community. At least from what I've been reading, mm -hmm. uh, I think people don't know. There's like a lot of question marks, and then there are some people who are blatantly like, no, nope, she doesn't represent us. And so, in, in just kind of monitoring that, I really just I, I like ask this every every time we come around to voting. Um, is there, are we ever going to get anyone that particularly represents the interests of black people? Mm. Like, 100%. I'm not sure that will ever happen. Mm. So why, it comes why do you say that? Why are you not sure about that? Because it's, because it's politics. Okay. Politics. There's a lot of compromise that happens in politics. A lot of behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of, you can't ever get 100% of what you want. It's politics. Okay. That's across the board. Okay. You know, even, I mean, you could be a senator, you can be, I mean, it don't matter. It's politics. It's, it's, you have to compromise and sometimes you have to try to push certain things through and you are not the only decision maker on those things. Let me ask you this. Do you think that is just us, black America? That's our um, reality? Or do you think that European America have to contend with the same? That they, they don't get their issues. Uh -huh. I don't. I think it's everyone, but I think we we get the worst of it because we are not organized mm -hmm. and we don't have the financial. We have it, 
but we just don't know how to organize it and push it you have these people who have money you know that's a big part of it too mm -hmm. because money can afford you certain things to get uh certain things pushed mm -hmm. and i just don't think that we're organized enough to do to do that so we end up kind of at the bottom of the barrel just scraping scraping up scrap apps mm -hmm. but i think everyone you know don't everyone has their agenda but the, not all they don't always get it pushed through you know what i mean okay yeah i don't think it's particularly like like we're targeted in that sense do you probably, go ahead do you think kamala harris is would would make a a, a good president for black people i don't think i don't think any person would make a good president for black people hmm. there's too much compromise involved in being the president of the U.S. of A. <laughs> mm. it's, it's, it's politics at the end of the day. And that's why we have to get, we really have to focus on doing it for self. Um, and, and just be self-sufficient as a people, as a collective. Uh, yes, because now do, I get why people push the voting process because there are um, decisions that are being made that affect us as a community, right? Mm -hmm. So if we don't go out there and vote against certain things, then we really can't cry. like you know we can't make a fuss when we are feeling the results of those particular things. So people push. We need to get out and vote. We need to be informed, and I'm not against that either. Right. Um, but I, I I think if we're looking for a, a black black president, uh, good luck. I'm not sure <laughs> that's gonna that's gonna ever happen for yeah. us. And yeah. I, I don't. That's me being pessimistic. I don't know. Yeah, I hear you. And, uh, you know, as far as voting, the whole voting thing for me goes, I went through phases. You know, I went through a phase where, of course, I was in one period in my life where, you know, I just went with the flow. <laughs> I just went with what, you know, what, what everybody around me said to do. And mm -hmm. then when I began to open myself, mind up to a lot more of uh, the things that take place in society that we don't readily hear about on the mainstream and so i got into this place of oh forget voting it don't matter you know it don't matter it's all rigged da, 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 da. and then i transitioned from that period uh, uh phase of my life to well wait a minute you know the more i'm researching and studying and gaining understanding and proper knowledge of things and how they operate I realized, well, wait a minute, I don't think it's such a good idea to just ball the, paper, the, the, the political paper up all together and toss it in the trash can because we can use it. <laughs> it can be, it, it, it has some use. It's, a, uh -huh. it's another, it can be another form of um, strategy for our battles. So here I am. I Go ahead. No, I was going to, I was just, no, go ahead. You can finish your thought because I was going to get back to Kamala, but go ahead. Yeah. So I was, so I hear you when you say that really no president under these, these here United States will be a good president for black America because of the compromising that takes place in that seat. Um, and so I think that's where a lot of us kind of teeter totter. You have a lot of black America, they say, forget it, it's, it's, it's not, it's, it's, you know, it's useless. And then you have another part of black America that say, how dare you, our, 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 we, there's a lot of us die for this right, we have to vote, we have to make our voices be heard. So where is the middle ground? So where is the ground of, okay, if we all vote, vote and make our voices heard, but we don't necessarily get much accomplished, for us as a whole. Now you have you have political candidates that go to APAC every year and they they lay out all of the agendas of what they're gonna do for the Jewish community. They, you know, they lay it out and it gets done. Or they yeah. know that you have, you have those you have your lobbyists, that's what I'm saying. All of that also takes money and then also collectively working together, organizing, putting your money together to push your agenda. Mm -hmm. That's where we're lacking, I think, mm -hmm. oftentimes mm -hmm. as it pertains to the political process. You know, and this thing here about uh, um, 
ancestors dying. I mean, what they were fighting for was for us to be given back our given our choice. We, our choice whether we wanted to vote or not is what was taken away. Right. That right. is what that is what we have back now. And so if somebody chooses not to be involved in the political process, this whole little guilt thing that we do with the using the ancestors is ridiculous. Yeah. I'm like, come on, man. People have choice. Before that was that is what was snatched away. You didn't have a choice. You couldn't vote. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Because I, I I get I don't like when people say things like, oh, um, uh, we got to vote for the lesser of two evils. We got to vote for somebody. Okay, you know what I'm saying? It's like, well, wait a minute, pause. I don't, I don't, I don't want to participate in evil at all. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? So I'm not going that route. So if that means me sitting out to hold, to hold on to my, my own personal integrity of what mm -hmm. I personally believe in my own life and how I feel, my own personal judgment, about um things and i'll do that but but to but to but to label me because i don't choose to participate in evil just because it's a little less than i don't like that type of yeah we got we got to be careful with that because if it it, it, it can eat now it, we got to be very careful with that because it can come down to something really serious if and then what do you do and if we have that line of thinking and when i say really serious it could be somebody that's pushing a pedophile agenda mm -hmm. versus somebody that's saying and this is just i'm just using as a you know a example yeah. or somebody that's saying you know we're going to reverse the hand of time and go back to slavery some people gonna say i ain't about working that plantation so i'm gonna go ahead and vote for the pedophile you good know what teaching. i'm saying good teaching i do know exactly what you say yeah that's and so what yeah, we I gotta be so we gotta be careful with that right right yeah good <laughs> stuff uh, because Butler. because oh, but Alkama mm -hmm. Alkama that's connected to the idea that your ancestors fought and therefore you 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 really shouldn't have it you you should vote regardless it's the idea that you have to vote right we it's almost like we've connected people's value to whether or not they vote if you don't vote you're dumb you're stupid or what you know you get what I'm trying to say yes I and do. so there's a there's a lot of pressure around that. And we gotta be very careful with that because when you when you push that, when you when you when you're that aggressive with it, and people are put in a corner or put in a position where they feel they have to vote, this is where voting for the lesser of two evils come in because they feel they have to vote. Yeah. But two of these things are it goes against their morals, and still they still they still feel pressured. Well, I have to vote. No, you do not. That's right. That's right. I agree with you. One hundred and ten. Percent. Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah. But Kamala Harris, I think a lot of people, like particularly black men, were having issues with her around the prison industrial complex. Right. Um, you know, just certain things with the death penalty, her which is, is right. racist in itself, right. um, has a racial undertone. And then, like, um, around like the police not wearing body cams, like certain things that she was fighting for that was affecting mostly black people right black men in particular i think a lot of, of them especially over in california are not feeling hard for that purpose right. um other people got into her background as far as um her being mixed race mm -hmm. um well yeah which yeah <laughs> her kind of being mixed that's a that's a little okay mm -hmm. but her being mixed or whatever her, they're feeling like she is now doing the um pulling the obama card where you try to appease to the black population by doing certain things that stereotypically us mm -hmm. you know what i mean like right. she she had um I'm announcing her her um thing to run for an mlk day like stuff like that right. you know and i feel like i feel like black americans are saying we see right through that because we've been there done that Mm -hmm. So they're a little skeptical about her. I mean, I think it's mostly around the whole prison piece. Yeah. Yeah, and certain certain things, certain laws that she, you know, was for. I think it's mostly, at least from what I've seen, mostly a lot of black men. Yeah. 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 I mean, I just, I just, I just question the sincerity, you know, of, of you know, she come out on what was it, Martin Luther King Day to announce, and you know, she, you know. Uh, you know all this you know 
black pride stuff going on uh, centered around her and things and it's like well well has you have you always been this way or it, or is this a, you know is this convenient now for you to you know what I'm saying pander to the black yeah. pride? But, but the, we, we, I think we, I think most of us, a lot of people are a little bit more involved, even if they don't completely understand, they're a little bit more tuned in yeah. to the po to the political process now, yeah. to where to realize like, hey, this feels like a repeat of such and such, or, right. you know, yeah, people are tuned in enough now to be like, no, nah, we're not getting hoodwinked again, you know what I mean? Because yeah, people feel, right. people feel like that even as around uh, uh, Obama. You know that mm -hmm. they felt played they voted for him mainly because he was the first black president and so it's almost like trying to use that same card with, with miss harris as far as first black w female right. president right. you know yeah and well, then right go ahead well what concerns me a lot about us in this whole voting um thing is like how we I'm, i've been seeing a lot of Kamala Harris 2020, you know, I'm on, I'm, I'm with Kamala, and I'm like, well, wait a minute, how are you, everybody haven't even been vetted yet, we, we haven't even, everybody hasn't even came out to, to put, throw their hat in the ring uh, for the presidency, so how can you be 100% down and for a, a, a specific candidate when you don't, you haven't even vetted them all, you don't even know, you know what I'm saying, all there is to, to who's on, who's in the pot, so that, kind of stuff concerns me about us because this is this like so what are you basing your decision on that's because because our our pain and our thirst and our hunger and our our um eagerness to be validated all of that those who are on the top always exploit that always mm -hmm. and so they play on those emotions as mm -hmm. far as like like when I'm, I know exactly what you're saying. It's like, oh, she's a black woman, you know. So let's get on board with that. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, she's she's in the in the uh, what what is she? The uh, sorority. AKA, yeah, she's in a yeah. sorority, so that's good enough, you know. Yeah, I, I call them the skiwees. She's a part of the skiwees, <laughs> and so I'm just like, so right away, she, that's who is being pushed now in our direction. Mm -hmm. Constantly mm -hmm. pushed, you know. Right. And so it becomes, oh, we got it. We have to get behind you know this black woman and and i think i think that this is just a good example of we really need to get away from just focusing on skin color yeah you I know agree. we really got it because it's it's oh, dangerous it's very dangerous I agree with um you. and i think we i think we're getting it now because there's a lot a lot of things that have happened over the uh, last couple of years that's showing us that yeah we actually we, you you must not be paying attention if you're missing it. There's a lot of things that have come up that have been showing us that, that, hey, this is beyond just skin color. Right. And you know what? Because Goodfellas here on YouTube just said, he said, black people have become more politically mature. We are looking into the past, present, and future policies. And I, yeah. yeah, I think we've, uh, we, we, we learned a thing or three from the Obama presidency. Yes, yeah. yes, because he yeah. was in there. He was in there eight years. Yeah, that's more than that enough easy. time. It ain't gonna be that easy for whoever's coming next for us. I, it's, I us. agree. Yeah, yeah. I, which is which is good. Which is that, good. I that agree. Means that we're paying attention. Mm -hmm. Um, that means that the generations coming will pay attention. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, because we they see us paying attention, and, and and some of us are getting involved more, and so that's a good thing. And they're going to do their research. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, um, so that's, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. I just think that we really need to get over accepting. We've been we've been trained or had to, and this is we're always in survival mode. We we just we always we're always taking crumbs and making a loaf out of crumbs. We're not trying to get the whole loaf. We say, oh, the crumbs will do. We'll just turn it into a loaf. We just you know miracle mi miracle way, uh, makers. And I'm just like, we have to get beyond being comfortable with just receiving crumbs. Yeah. Because when we do that, they just, that means that for them, they know exactly, just throw them, just throw them this bone. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And a, 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 that, Kamala, a Kamala Harris, a Cory Booker, you know, whoever. Right. And a lot of that stems on our dependency. We, we so dependent on the system. Again, that's why going back to where, where we were talking about how, um, some of us feel like you have to vote. You must vote. It, you know, there is no ifs, ands, or buts. 
Uh, I think that that, be, that is due to our dependency on this system because you don't even, you, there's not even another option in your mind to consider besides voting to get what you need done in this society when there is a lot of different options besides voting to get what you need done in this society. But we don't even go there mentally because mm -hmm. of our dependence, our full, complete dependence on this current system. There's a lot of pressure when you're um, when you're a quote unquote minority. Yeah. Uh, a lot of pressure um, because even like you're saying, you know, you being told you have to vote, right? Mm -hmm. It's not just that we are we are almost told who we're supposed to vote for as black people. It's it is, it's not just as simple as you have to vote. It becomes you have to vote for this particular person, or you're not really about the black agenda, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we go as far as trying to tell each other who to vote for. Yeah, right. Well, yeah. Okay, well, Cory Corey Booker, real quick, because we uh -huh. talked on this for a while. Um, what do you think about his run? Anything? I, have, I haven't I have really searched him out. I look, I was looking more into Kamala than him. Okay, okay. Uh -huh. So, yeah, um, I know a little bit about Cory's past, about, you know, in, in um, you know, his stint with, um, he was the mayor of, um, what is it? Help me out, family. Over in Jersey. Uh, Newark. Over in Newark, Jersey. And uh -huh. uh, there was some mixed views about him then. I, I, you know, what I heard and knew about him back then, I liked. I liked that he was, um, you know, he seemed to be down for the people, no doubt. Now, you know, a lot of people have different, you know, their different uh, theories about even then. Um, what right. I found, he, he, just, he was just on um, the, the, the uh, Breakfast Club the other morning oh yeah yeah you know he's doing his stint um he's saying that he's not taking any monies from um the big corporations so uh -huh. so no, what is it the big pot pack or whatever so he's um I, I found that was cool although he has taken money from a lot of pharmaceutical industries in the past so i don't know how that's gonna you know square up um right. what i found disturbing what i always find disturbing is when they're asked the direct question uh charlamagne asked him directly what are you, what are, what are your plans for black america and he said well you know he skated around now all oh, right you know well i you know i i plan to help all of america so i'm like well why, why is that such a hard prop question to answer I even even donald trump when he was on the campaign trail he answered questions about what he was going to do for black America. So why why does so all these uh, quote unquote black politicians are so afraid of standing up and speaking for black people? I, that's just the part that kind of frustrates me. So when I heard him say that, I was like, you know, he kind of he kind of went down a little on my notch of you know appreciation. Yes, thank you guys. Yeah, Newark. But yeah, so that's all yeah. I wanted to say about Corey. Yeah, I think I think with with stuff like that again, that's politics. Yeah. Because he don't want to lose votes by saying the wrong thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So he yeah, that's, I get it because he needs that white base too. I get that. I get right. that. You know, <laughs> right. Somebody gotta have some courage out here. God, leech. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's, 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 hey. well, it's not. It's not going to be a politician that is, is hoping to, to become the president of the United States, ma'am. Mm. <laughs> There's deep. a lot of compromise involved in that. That's deep in and of itself that if you say you're going to do anything for black America, that you can potentially lose votes. That's interesting. That's an interesting concept. But anyway, um, yeah. so I, I have here down for entertainment. Um. The Super Bowl. Did you tune in, Alcama? I was just about to go there. That's <laughs> funny how we be on the same tune. I, no, of course I didn't tune in. Of course I didn't tune in. I hadn't been tuning in for, for a while, even before the whole Kaepernick thing. So no. Yeah, I seen a lot of. I see a lot of people were like, it, you know, like there's a lot of uh, not a lot, but I've seen some people that was just like having their Super Bowl party, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's like, I'm like, what, when, when were we boycotting? Was this last year? Mm. Or when were, when, were they, when, when were they boycotting? Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't watch it anyway. I'm not into football. Right, right. But 
you know, it look it seems like stuff just kind of passes very quickly for us. Yeah, that's 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 it. Yeah, we 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 not sick and tired of being sick and tired. But what I found interesting was that the Super Bowl had the lowest ratings in ten years. I heard, yeah, mm. I heard. So there's a lot of people that didn't tune in that too. Didn't tune in. I really think we give we we don't give ourselves the credit we deserve credit. a lot of times. We yeah. really don't. You know what I'm saying? I think a lot of times people can get into this bag of oh we ain't never gonna do nothing. We ain't this. We don't do stuff. We can't stick together. Da 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 da. da. But should be we should be careful with that kind of talk because there all are we all we things. focus on what we didn't do. Right. More right. than what we did do. The glass yeah, that's half true. empty. The glass half empty. Yes. And so then yes. things like this come out. It's like, well, well, wait a minute. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, everybody, not just tuned out and don't care and things of that nature. You, Clearly, you know. You know, the other day, um, someone was having a con a conversation on face. I think it was Facebook, um, and they brought up something about like the interracial uh, dating and stuff. Mm -hmm. And because I know majority of black men and black women are married to each other, mm -hmm. that's a conversation. I'd be like, why are we having this conversation? <laughs> Not saying that we should wait until the numbers go up higher. But I'm just like, we talk about it as if it's a majority thing, and it's not. Yeah. You know, but that's the power of the media. That's the power of the media. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, so I think it's, 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 it's the same thing. It's like we focus on, oh, my God, this is happening versus, yeah, but this is happening too. Yeah. 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 Look, look on the flip side. What is the flip side? And we don't. And, it's, and we should be careful, like I say, in that frame of mind because um, you miss out. You miss out on what's in, on the flip side because you're always focused on um, all the things that could go, go wrong or negative or things of that nature. And you start to believe yourself that the sky is falling. <laughs> right. Yeah. What do you think about, since we're in entertainment, about this um, Jesse Smollett guy that, he, that said he was attacked? That's 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 tricky and sticky. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Um I mean once once you're listening to like the details, you're like, why do I feel like there's parts to the story that's missing? Yes, exactly. That's what you know, is and I am not big on the whole, you know, I don't even like the word conspiracy theorist because, you know, but you know, that thinking every single thing is a conspiracy and you know what I'm saying? I'm not even yeah. I don't even like I don't even go there. But for this yeah. particular scenario, I was mm -hmm. like, come on now. There's a lot of stuff here not just not adding up. It's just not. It's just not adding up. And then he wouldn't release his phone records to the police. It's like, what's that about? And then, you know, right. it's sub, sub Saharan temperatures. <laughs> you out here, you know what I'm saying? People out here pouring bleach on other people. But, and, you know, but my, my, my thing is like, what? I, there has to be a reason why they are requesting their phone records because if, if i go on the street and i get jumped and i'm reporting that i was jumped by these people why do you need my phone records so that's what i'm saying there's some details involved that yeah, hasn't I, been disclosed yeah because i think so why that, are they asking for your phone records i think the authorities don't believe the story either and right, that's, that's why what they're I'm trying saying. to get to the bottom of it mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> yeah and you know him and Kamala Harris have have some history, and so she oh, came yeah. out. It was an interesting, you know. Jeannie kind of talked on it, irritated Jeannie, and his, yeah. you know, his he mentioned something along the lines that it's political, you know. I but you know, you see how they was trying to like kind of get on straight men. Yeah, you know, like see, they don't feel like don't. straight straight men straight men silence on the issue is not good, and I'm like, what? How do we turn that? How do we get there? Right. How do we get there? Yeah. Yeah, it's deep, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's very that's very forceful to me. And I'm like, what about straight women? There are straight women like myself that hasn't don't really have anything to say about it. Right. Right. How are you gonna But your your focus you come on straight straight black men. Right. You're gonna finger point them in particular in the media. Yeah, that's why I say, you know, these agendas are real. They really are. Yeah, and th and I think when people when people talk about agenda, like pe people get all like defensive, like oh, what's the agenda of of the game? You know, and then, and then they get sarcastic with it. But this is what makes you think, like you know, you guys are there's an aggression 
aggressive tone, you know, as it pertains to homosexuality and whether people is in favor of it or not. What is that? Like someone can say, I mean, black people of all people should know this. Somebody can say, you know, I don't like, that's their prerogative. I don't like black people. There are black people who, who claim that they're not black. Right. You know what I mean? And it's like, what, what, where's this aggression coming from? Oh, you don't like me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm gonna, oh, you gonna love me? That's right. Yeah. You know, like that's that's. It's almost like that's how it's coming off. You know, when someone. It's I'm not saying I hate forceful. you. I'm I'm just saying I don't condone or I'm not for your lifestyle. And then this aggression comes out and and the name calling homophobic. You know, homophobia is thrown around. The word homophobic is thrown around. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, how did you even get there? Like, it's almost like people can't feel something opposite. Right. In addition to that, we don't. We there's laws. There's literally laws being passed that mm -hmm. could, will make you a criminal. Will get you landed in prison if you go against some of you know if you go against some of these homosexual behaviors, or if you you know what I'm saying if you in a different mind state and want to you know do something different, then you can be risked. You are at risk for being put in jail. You know, they're passing laws now to where they're teaching about the lifestyle in elementary school. Right. Now, you know, so if you're a parent who don't want their child, you know, taught that that lifestyle is okay, that it's natural, then you become the problem. So, mm -hmm. you know, there's some serious things going on right now that we really should be pay paying attention to. And mm -hmm. I think a lot more of us don't speak out about these things because we have so many people in our lives that are homosexual and mm -hmm. we make it personal we get our feelings involved we don't want to hurt our loved ones feelings and things of that nature so we take a back seat and we can we keep quiet about mm -hmm. it you know and so but the risk of doing that because i too i have there's a lot of i have i have homosexuals in my family mm -hmm. i have friends that i consider good friends who are homosexual um, mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that I'm, I'm going to I'm going to muffle my voice, you know, mm -hmm. and for the bigger picture involved. And actually, I have some friends who are homosexual who will agree that there is a homosexual agenda currently at play. So, yeah, um, yeah. yeah that's what they are. The aggressive tone involved in it is what makes me look and say, what is it the child tr really trying to do here? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. People still have. People have should still have free will and choice, and they can choose no to your lifestyle all day, every day. Because there are other things that people say we say no to, and people say, "Well, this is a lifestyle," and it, and they and we're like, "No, we're not accepting it." But when it comes specifically to that, it becomes a whole other issue because they're trying to make it into this like civil rights thing, and <laughs> right. that's what it's turning into. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're still being still on the um, entertainment portion. Have you heard this thing about the rapper Twenty One Savage? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I and I was just doing I'm just doing some research this morning, so I don't have all the in and out details. I kept hearing the name him pop up on my stream. I'm like, what is going on with this? I didn't know who it was. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what Twenty One Savage was, but but evidently he's a um, a, a rapper, a young rapper who was uh, born in the UK. And he was here in America on a on a travel visa. I think that's what they call it. I think the the the, the parents was on a work visa or something like that. Mm -hmm. Right. But he but none of his fans knew. According to him, he grew up in Atlanta. His parents because he was he was re, he was repping Georgia. His parents, but he said he his parents were from the Caribbean. I saw yeah. His mom his mom is from Dominica. Yeah. Oh okay. Mm -hmm. So now he's being deported. So the people were saying that he was, you know, he's kind of, he was kind of being, um, uh, he wasn't being truthful in his, all his, his rap lyrics and things of that nature. Nobody knew that this young guy was not from here. And so now he's, he's risking being deported. I think they have him now in, in, in an isolation, in, held in isolation. And he's looking to deport him back to the UK. Well, so it's it, for me. It's very interesting because some years back, apparently he had a drug charge. Yeah. And I'm wondering why that didn't come up then, because usually there's like some criminal activity involved. Interesting. Right? That's when 
you know, the talk of deportation and stuff comes up. So I'm not sure. I, maybe someone missed something at that time. Yeah, and I think um, according to his attorney, uh, well, no, his attorney said he's been living here since he was he's been seven years old. And, yeah, um, they're saying from the first grade, and then they say that he went back to the UK or something, and then he came back at 12, and he's been here since then. Right. I mean, he is he's like in his, what, late 20s? Yeah. And that's a very long time. Well, where but, are his parents in all this? His, his... I mean, they probably, the media probably, they just probably just stay out of the media, but I'm sure they're there, but they have a response, they had a responsibility to their minor child, but you know what? The immigration process, and I've, I had to learn this. If you are American, you you <laughs> most of us are ignorant on the immigration process. We don't we don't get it. Mm -hmm. We don't get it. You have to kind of know someone mm -hmm. um, who is going through it, who has gone through it. So, and, and and when you hear you're like you you have a lot of questions like that doesn't make sense. Well, why this? Why that? The paperwork, the expenses involved. Because people be like, why didn't the parents do this? But that stuff is not cheap. Yeah, that stuff is not cheap. And when people come here, it's like they're busy trying to make a living for themselves. Mm -hmm. You're not thinking about paying thousands of dollars, you know, to get your three kids and yourself through the immigration process. That can happen. There's a lot of kids out here who, you know, he didn't come. He didn't come here when he was too young to remember that he was from the UK. That brother knew he was from born. He, he know good and well. <laughs> he was from the UK. Twelve yeah. years old, I got nephews and nieces. Who come to who come to the states and, and we don't wear a uh, rare territory yeah, but who come to the state they come to the states and they rep the virgin islands hard because you're 12. like you kind of know yeah and that's <laughs> the where i was born part, and that's the interesting part of the story for me it's like why is it such a big secret why don't why why haven't you ex shared this information why did we well, have to another, find out another? like this there's another conversation that was triggered by exactly what you're asking. You know, which like, hey, you have a you have a yeah. certain you have a certain group of people out there who feel that um, you know uh, descendants of chattel slavery they call them docks yeah. um, that a lot of people come here and benefit off of the hard work and 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 take away benefits from people who are descendants of child slavery mm -hmm. and when i say people i mean other black people from foreign countries so yeah. this has sparked another conversation so where it's like you know they feel like like some of them are jumping up and saying see this is what we mean you know they ride the coattail of because they say he was displaying all the stereotypes of african-american yeah. boys men yeah. but, you know but not, but but again, he was also raised in the culture too. He's been here a long time. Yeah, unless That's, yeah, right. Unless in his mind, he kept a secret because he didn't 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 want to be deported. So he well, could have very well been hiding the fact that he was from UK because he knew his paperwork wasn't straight or something. You know? I, yeah, and be out, people was like, well, where, where's his accent? <laughs> he came at twelve. They're like, well, where the heck his accent went? And I I kind of agree with that because I'm like, 12? Yeah, you, you got that accent. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I but don't... again, his attorney, as of, I think it was this morning, said, his attorney said that he's been living here since 7. The mix-up was that he went home for a little while and then came back at 12. Right. I but think he, that's what they're saying at yeah. 12 years. That's what the 12 year like 12 years old. Yeah. I think then he went to visit and he came back so yeah. they're looking and thinking like he came when he was 12 right. you know what i mean right but right. if he was here if he was here since he was seven yeah. then that makes sense right right and i want to mention too that he says he believes he's being deported because of some of his lyrics so he's come yeah, that's out what said. in defense of the um the the uh flint he mentioned something about the water still being dirty in flint and he also mentioned about children being snatched at the borders from their parents and he said yes, it was political only, lyrics right political lyrics so it was only after he spoke about that is when they came and snatched him up and was ready to be deported that's and what that's what the, believe. that's what i heard as well some people like, like you say there's some like oh this is a conspiracy there's always that as yeah, well that I can you know, so, I, yeah I, I think about i'm like how many people do we that we know of that's been deported back from a european nation <laughs> from here you know what I'm saying? That really just doesn't happen. You don't hear about people going, okay, they're going to snatch you and snatch you, take you back to England or send you back to Switzerland. 
or send you, you know what I'm saying? No, it's usually always brown and black nations that people are snatched and taken, you know, and deported to. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting concept. There's a lot, there's also a lot of people here um, from the, of the diaspora who have, who's in that same position he is in. People that we know, yeah. and we just do not know their immigration status. Mm. We're friends with people, you know, and you don't know. I have some people, I don't, I don't even want to say much about it, but I know some people personally in that situation. So, yeah. And the reality is like, we, 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 we laughing, but it's not laughing at the situation because the reality is you're talking about somebody's freedom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, exactly. And people have stories of, of ICE you know, arresting them and, and putting them in isolation. Yeah. Uh, it's not anything pretty. Uh, so, but one thing I realize about us, I don't know if this is good or bad, but <laughs> we take anything and make a joke out of it. Mm. I don't care what it is, Alkama. Yeah. I mean, the R. Uh, Kelly thing that happened, yeah. you see the moves going around, the Bill Cosby thing, like, it doesn't matter what it is. And I'm not sure, is that our way of, like, getting through it possibly i'm not sure but yeah even with this um possibly. i think the the uh this what, what's the white girl's name who was on drugs demi laval something like that she made a, a joke about saying her best part of the super bowl has been the 21 savage memes oh they said black twitter twitter dragged her for filth hmm. but most people felt like it was only because she's white they felt like if it was a black person that made the comment, like a comedian or something like that, yeah. that they would not have dragged her like that. Yeah. So it, it, become, it became a thing of like, you were strung out in, in, in heroin or op you know. And they said she had, to really, she had to come off of Twitter. She had to close her account. Yeah. That's how bad it wow. got. Yeah. 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 It's rough. It's rough out here. It's definitely a well, what about What about this guy, Liam Neeson? The, 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 this is the um, the white actor who recently admitted he wanted to hurt a black man. I don't, I don't know anything about that. Okay, so there's a um, gosh, he played in so many movies. If you see his face, you'll know who I'm talking about. Um, the last uh, set of movies I remember him in is Taken, where they kidnap his daughter and put her. Uh, it, uh, it was like a, a sex trafficking movie. Okay. Um, and he's an actor, and he recently came out and uh, talked about an incident that happened with a friend of his that was raped. And once she disclosed who the like who the person was that raped her, mm -hmm. and he found out it was a black man, he said he actually went out looking for like a black man to hurt. Oh, I heard and didn't, about that. Yeah, and didn't okay. find any. So it became an issue of him now defending himself and saying he's not racist. You know, um, everything is not race related. Mm -hmm. I think there is, I think we forget like the human nature mm -hmm. side of it, mm -hmm. like the human condition. Um, it's like, okay, he, he was probably, I'm not defending him. I'm saying he was probably in his anger. Somebody does something to my child, right? Mm -hmm. And my child hasn't identified the person, okay? My child could say, well, it was this, you know, I don't know. Um, it was a, somebody that was a part of this church or whatever, right? I could make a generalization and I could just like be like, I'm, I'm done. I'm not going back to church. Like no other church. Now, okay. it happened at this one particular church. <laughs> but right. I'm so triggered and upset, I just canceled church altogether. Right. That is a, that is a natural reaction. So... If the, ta if the discussion became, is he racist or not? Now, is he a, 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 a covert racist? I don't know that. I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of those out there that have certain conversations over the, the dinner table, and we don't know. You know, and we like them in, in movies and whatever, and we just don't know until something comes up. Right. But I think this particular incident, I, I wasn't rocking with the, oh, that's racist. I was just like, that's, that's human nature. Yeah. That's yeah. human nature. You know, there's things that, that, this isn't this the stuff we talk about where you have a lot of black women that say, I don't feel protected yeah. by black men because they were hurt by black men from a very young age mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and throughout their life. That's a reaction to a trauma that, you get what I'm saying? Yes, I do. Has happened, has happened to you. Yeah. I think, I, I think, um, 
okay, good fella said he did say on Good Morning America that it was a primal emotion. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, going to your point. I think we're sensitive overall about these, you know, a lot of what's, you know, going on, you know, name calling in particular. Now, I get if somebody is um, discriminating and, and, you know what I'm saying, and causing you some severe harm in your personal life with their racism. Because racism is like, it's in that. And it's not just here in America, it's all over the world. Mm -hmm. And so we can't escape it. But I think we've become so sensitive that any little thing that even deems or seems could be uh, a, a, a racial, we go on the attack. And I think that's because we operate so much out of emotion. You know, we operate more so out of our emotion as opposed to our logic. In my personal opinion. So but there's, some, there's also some historical um, justification for it too, Algama. Um, it's not, I don't. I think it's. I don't think it's just emotion. I, I agree with that part. Um, we are a bit too emotional and too reactionary, um, oftentimes. But I think there is some historical justification as to why, mm -hmm. because for a long time and still is to this day, uh, it has been about our skin color. You know, not getting that job, not being able to buy that house in that neighborhood, not being able to go to that school has always been connected to our skin color, right? And so because we know that there's still injustices that's happening against black bodies, even to this day, we are very sensitive to that. You know, other races, like I would just say the white race, which I hate to, you know, do the comparison, they don't, they don't have to, um, they don't even know what that feels like. You know, mm -hmm. but when we wake up, that it's almost like. And I, I, my my question now is, how do we how do we transition from that to where your blackness is always at? Well, other people's dislike for your blackness is always the, on the forefront of their mind. How do we get off of the defensive line? How yeah, that's what I mean. Is it, 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 that possible all the time? That's my but point. Is, is that possible in a racist society? It may not. It because is it, is, is it dangerous to pretend that it's not a reality? I think it is dangerous. And is, is that the conversation we should have? And how do we get out of being on the defense our whole lives long? You know, so do we do this all? You know, it's like, okay, so how many people are we going to um, trash on media for not allowing us in our own apartment with a key code? Or how many people are we going to trash and get fired for not allowing our children to sell cookies out front of our house? <laughs> or, you know what I'm saying? How many right. people are we going to trash for, like the govern governor of Virginia, for wearing blackface in his past? I mean, right. are we, is, is, this, is, this, uh, is, is, this, is this our continuation? Are we going to continue because it's not going to stop? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's not just going to stop. So are we going to be doing this? Our whole lives long, or are we going to step back and figure out what uh, what what are we doing here, and how do we make this better for our lives? I, I think the, the the question is is it healthy, and I personally don't think it's healthy um, because sometimes it's not even racially. Some things is not even race race related, mm -hmm. and we inject race in it. That's my point. You know, it's yeah, just, we, we inject are so race sensitive. Right. But I, I think that we create uh, we, we create our own prisons by doing that. There's, there's still a part of me that's trying to like figure out, because I, I know black people don't like to hear when other black folks say, you know, transcending race, you know? They don't like that term, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm not just like, I, I think that you can still, you can, you can go beyond the, you being a black person and still fight for like you could go beyond just simply i'm a black woman so this is what i have to do as a black woman right that's a little bit monolithic right mm -hmm. and so this is what black people is supposed to do i think you could go beyond that and still fight against injustices i agree with you, you know I, I think that you can do that I but agree. i think a lot i think we don't we don't allow the space in the community and i, and I say that's that's a part of being a minority is that no one wants to be outside of the group yes and so most people is like, oh, yes. so who we boycotting today? We waiting to be told who we should boycott. Yes. We waiting to be told who we should cancel. Yes. We waiting to be told who we who we shouldn't vote for. Yes. We just waiting from uh, who we waiting for. I don't know the black the black community. 
when when we see that everyone agree on this particular thing, it's like okay so that's what i'm going with because majority of my people going with that right. you know there's no there's not enough space for critical thinking that's right there's not enough space for you know uh, for disagreements even that's right you know to, for me to be able to say oh come on now nah, i don't i don't see it that way right. and us have an educated civil conversation about it without resorting to name calling and calling each other coons and sellouts and everything else that's why i was so appreciative for i, I, I can't remember who did the special i can't remember who it was but it was um uh, one of these uh stations that did a special on the um uh, these young black uh republicans voting for trump and in trump corner and it was a group of them and they went it was a documentary it was like 30 minutes and they went and they and they actually toured them going to the white house cheering on Trump and they took the time to interview these people to get a perspective from their minds mm -hmm. why why are you you know and, and and I watched that and I was grateful for that because I said like you said we don't offer ourselves space for that it's like you know the majority of my people say Ooh, um you know we got to go, you know, we got to go with this. And, but wait a minute, we're not a monolith. There's a lot of us in, in our communities that don't agree with that. Yeah, I'm, I'm they most see of us, things differently. Yeah, most of us, a lot of us, there's a lot of things that a lot of us don't agree on. And what happens to us is that we either go into silence about it or we talk about us disagreeing about it in private. Yeah, because, because you don't just, have a voice. Safer. They don't right, have a voice safer. because so they don't get want to be destroyed. Out. It's like you got to think, you got to see things my way. If not, I'm going to destroy you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The court of public opinion is going to destroy you for not yeah. seeing things our way. Without opening, at least giving these people an opportunity to express their views. At least. You may not agree with them, but they should, just like you have the opportunity and the space to express your views. So should they. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you agree we have that? to. But we all have. We all. We all come from different backgrounds. We all have different upbringing. Mm -hmm. um, all of us didn't. Ex we don't. All of us didn't receive the same education. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Every household was not a pro black household. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, we have to remember these things, and all of that is going to ex uh, affect how we experience this world and our perception of the world. You right. know what I mean? Right. So yeah, you, you you really have we have to put that into perspective when we in perspective when we have these conversations. Yeah. And that way we don't get down to oh you a sellout or whatever. No, that might just be a thinking brother. And his thoughts are just not with it's yours. That's it. With your own. And I think that when we do that, we that widens uh, the gap. Is is the widens the gap uh, um so the it division. takes us further away from unity. It really does. It takes us further away from unity. So, cause now you in that group over there, and I ain't part you know, of that group over there. You, you know, so. I came on, I came online, and I, I just was seeing the stuff with Kamala Harris, and then uh, with with uh, uh, Corey Booker, and I'm just like, <laughs> I'm just like, you know, any black person that tries to, any black person that steps up into any like office or leadership role, like there, there are those black people. There's a certain like group of us who we go and dig up something on that person and i'm like are we gonna be able to have anyone because let's can we dig up dirt on you hmm. because if that's the good case point. if you're going by people walking a straight path their entire life that's good point like we're, we're, we're not gonna have any nobody, nobody. Uh, Altama. not even them not even you not even the not one that's even digging you. up the dirt. <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting. So right? I, I saw like I was they were like, Oh, cancel Kamala and then Boca came up. I mean, yeah, um Corey Boca came up and then it was like cancel him, you know, or somebody stepping into maybe somebody come out and say, Oh, we buying this studio so we can start doing and then somebody come up with like don't pay them no mind because ABC I'm like, This is exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> this is exhausting. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, but again, I that goes know. into not the the critical thinking point is missing there i think that that goes into we we really don't we aren't taught it we aren't taught how to if you don't have like parents or people in your sphere in your close circle that um teaches you how to think critically teachers growing up you just don't learn that it's a skill you don't learn it 
And so you do, you blow with the wind and any little old thing that you don't like about a person, you mm -hmm. cut them off completely. I but don't like of, completely. Most of, most of us grew up in households like that too. Um, to where your child, and, and it starts very young, because um, you know anyone that talks to little kids, you, you kind of have an idea of how their mind works. Um, it starts very, very young because kids might have a different perception and then you begin to tell them, no, you don't think like that. This is how you need to think. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? It starts very, very young, especially with black children. Yeah. That's because I, like my son, and I felt a type of way, you know, he's pro Martin Luther King because he just feels like everybody needs to be able to get along. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then his, his response was, and if white people and black people can't get along, then the white people just need to go separately somewhere, and the black people need to go separately. That was his thing. But for him, it's like, but if they can get along, get along. And you know what he said? He even went as far as saying, because black people could be good at building schools, and white people can be good at building streets. Mm -hmm. So they need each other. That's, that's his perception. Right. At six years old, I'm having this conversation with him. And in my mind, it, it, inside of me, I want to be like, yeah, but they don't love you, though. You know? <laughs> right. That fist. That black fist will come out and reach the sky. <laughs> but, but in that moment, I had to provide the space to allow him to have an opinion. to Because I could see the wheels turning. And to allow him to express that and not me project my 37, 36 years of experience on the earth onto him. Good point. Now, I can teach and I can guide, right. but allow him the space to be able to think. And that was him thinking for himself. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, hey. Yeah, 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 I hear you. Okay, but it we starts have, young. Um, yeah. We don't have much time left, but I just um, want to just do, oh, man, I didn't want to get into the um, um, international news, Venezuela. This whole coup. Oh, yes. Going on right now. Go for, with, go, go for it, Alcum. I okay, real quick. The yeah, I know we don't have much time, but real quick, yeah. Venezuela family, if y'all haven't heard, um, just um, just type in uh, Nicolas Maduro. He actually put in a um, message. He put a message out. Uh, he, he's, he's asking for the help of... Okay, he's disturbed and distracted me in the background. I'm sorry, family. He's um he's asking for the help of the American people to stop this coup that's currently going on in his country of Venezuela. Now they are now the your uh, the Western interests um have uh it's it's stated their own man actually this whole one uh one Guado Guado I think I'm saying his name right. So he didn't name himself the president. He would actually, you know, he would actually put his hand on the book and swore himself in and everything, girl. So he named himself the president without even going through the proper procedures of doing that. So there's a lot of mess going on in, in uh, Venezuela right now. So watch that because, you know, the American interests, of course, is, they never change their um, what is Venezuela? What does Venezuela have? Oil? Oil. Uh -huh. That's the main thing. Oil. They, they they want the oil. And I wish I had time to go into my whole yeah. personal theory as to why they're all doing this to begin with. Why are they going all over the place? You know what I'm saying? Destroying, toppling all these nations and, and putting in their um, puppet figures. You know what I'm saying? You know, and a lot of it is for the power. They, they, they need to... America, the long story short is America is attempting to maintain power throughout the world and in order for them to do that in order for our cars to run in the street in order for the buses in order for the the tankers to get back and forth and all that stuff with all these goods and supplies and demands and for the wheels of america to continue to run they need oil and oil is a finite uh mineral it's not here forever and so you know so they need this oil from these other nations in order to keep america strong and healthy and powerful and they don't really have the money to pay for it then that's a whole another issue so you know what i'm saying but that's it that same strategy uh it's the same strategy different day they've same been doing this for a very day. long time different region now yes. here they are in with venezuela trying to take what these people have Absolutely. you know what i'm saying and so uh the president is, is making a plea to the american people please help us you know stop this from going on you know stop stop this coup from taking place so keep your eye out on venezuela 
They're, your guys are in my heart and soul. Um, and I'm definitely in the in the corner of uh, the president, actually, who who is uh, uh, who's under uh, Hugo Chavez. So Chavez, he was um, a student of Hugo Chavez. So Hugo uh -huh. Chavez trained him up to take his uh -huh. place. You know? mm. So yeah, so you know, it's a lot more that can be said about that. But in the interest of time, I'm gonna yeah. put it right there. And okay. Yeah. Did you have? I just want to touch on. I'm not even going to go into details, but uh, check out this new um, law that just passed in New York City, where you know there is no there. Uh, the, the, the uh, abortion law, the new abortion law, where you can um, there is no more. What am I trying to say? Uh, it used to be a certain amount of months or weeks that you could the, the abortion can be had. Now they did away with that, so you can kill babies <laughs> up to nine months out of the womb. Nine months? Yeah. New York, the law permits abortions after 24 weeks if a healthcare professional determines the health or life of the mother is at risk or the fetus is not viable. So that's an interesting word. Look that up. Um, and but not months. Why won't you just bring the baby through? Lord? Okay. Yeah, and no, and that's not even then. It's actually ten states that actually has this law, including Washington D.C. Believe it. Really? Or not. Yeah, yeah. But New York kind of put it on the map, and they're trying to say that what what is this really about? Because um, after you know these third or more trimester abortions are very, very, very rare to begin with. So why do you even need a law passed now to say it's okay? You know, so that's a whole all interesting. I wanted to talk about that too some more. And um, that's oh, it. I just I I, want to send a quick shout out to Deshaun Farad. He's on my Facebook page. If anybody know him, he's uh, he does really good in keeping us abreast too of a lot of stuff going on in our community. So shout out to yes. Deshaun. He keeps me um, posted on a lot of news stories. So that's okay. it. You had anything, Hanifa? No, that's all we have for today. We're way past time. <laughs> yeah, we are. We are. So again, thank you, family, for tuning in to the Empower Hour. We do this each and every Wednesday, Hanif and I, from 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on the eLife Media Group Network. Um, subscribe. Definitely subscribe to our um, YouTube channel, which is under Miss Free the People. Um, hit us up on Facebook. We're under the Empower Hour Talk Show on Facebook. And, uh, yeah, tune in. So until next week, take care of each other out there. Peace. All right. Peace, family.